right, I'm just going to throw away the last recording since it uh, didn't quite work and we only got a few minutes in. So I'll just relay when we last left off, uh, both of our heroes have yep. fallen into an unconscious state. So we are beginning with determining their outcomes. We rolled uh, to see the level of surgeon at a 15. Then we rolled to see uh, if they both passed under. They did. So now yep. we're determining what that means. Um, so let's let me determine what that means here. Treasury needed box. Oh, interesting. I've never been doing surgery, right? Uh oh. So a character <laughs> requires surgery until he has half has recovered half of his total hit points. Okay. Um. So I'll make sure I keep that checked then for now. So yep. I to half yet. Knights who should be resting. Okay. I'm just looking into this here, skimming. Um, Sunday morning at noon, he gains his healing rate, three points, natural healing for the week. Oh, it's over a week. A week. Yep. <laughs> yep. That's going to be a while. <laughs> Modifies the surgery if the patient is kept un in unclean or unhealthy conditions. Minus five. Oh, okay, so it's only on a critical or a fumble for that surgery skill that goes poorly. Um, no. Oh. But you could have got a first aid rule for each of your initial wounds and should have. So let's start with that if we haven't done that already. I think we did one for Varus already, didn't we? All um, right. Didn't you or, or didn't we? I remember Bruni, you talking about your, your squire. Uh, Ran doing... over there to, provo to do that. Yeah. I believe we did that. Okay. I, don't, I didn't mark anything, so I'm not sure. How old is what he? 
He is 20 years old this year. Okay, well, why don't we start? Do you guys know roughly how many hits you each took? I took two. You know, one yeah. for two points of damage and one for 22 points of damage. What about you, Varys? Probably only two. Yeah, it doesn't take much. I got hit pretty hard with something. I don't even remember what it was at this point. Um, I just rolled d20s twice each. If you roll a 20, it's a critical, right? Okay. There is no fumble with a 20-year-old spire. Four and a two. Okay. So, um, each of you make a 2d3 roll, please. I got six, two threes. And okay. two twos for me. So, so when you're both stabilized, you you return six health. What is when with six health return, Bernius? Where are you at? Your, uh, I am at six. Six total. Six total. I was Oof. dropped from twenty-two to zero in one hit. Okay. Um, so you're at six health, and what is your unconscious? Seven. So you're still unconscious at the beginning of that. Uh, yep. Okay. Um, Varys. Yeah. Uh, with the plus four, what level are you at? Uh, eight, which is, my unconscious is seven. Okay, so you're just coming to. Yeah. Um, after first aid, you you wake up. Um, right. Now. Um. Hmm. You guys were. Uh, let's do this. I'm gonna see where you guys got brought to. Okay, you got brought back to Melahood. I was gonna see if you got brought to Linden Pool instead. <laughs> okay. Um. Cause you're, back home. You're close, right? The border. Um, yep. So you're returned to Melahut, and then after the week with Chirdri, um, I need you both to make another D3 roll. This is for your successful week with Chirdri. Just one. Another three. Okay. Does that bring you into conscious state, Brunius? Yep. Okay. Um, all right. So as you two are kind of, you you know, you're both basically told you're in sick bed, right? Um, yeah. You're told that you were, that they were victorious. Uh, and then from there, I'll get intrigue rolls to get other news and gossip. All right. I like news and gossip. Uh, am I able to find out if, how, what the casualties were on our side? Uh, <laughs> intrigue roll. I, because I'm specifically looking for uh, the casualties on our side, I'd like to roll Loyalty Century Knight. Okay. And I fail. Is that Melancholy too on top of it? Uh, because it's a 16, I believe no, so. No, 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 no. Only a fumble. That's right. All right. So no. I'm pretty sure. Well, let me the, the charts right here. Uh, sixteen. Yeah. Fa oh, fa and failure is melancholy. Yeah. And do so, I lose a point? You do, which is actually quite interesting, uh, given what happened. Um, Especially because in Open Pendragon it goes up again. Yeah. To a seventeen. Yeah. <laughs> right. Um. All right. Uh, then see if I even succeed at the task. Yeah. Nope. nope. Nobody is telling me up. anything. <laughs> I think I think with you both failing, someone ordered them not to tell the sick anything, other than things are victorious, but not to, not to let them their minds sort of dwell on it. You know, I think it's kind of yep. what it is. Right. Um, it's for our own good. Yeah. 
Yeah, that that worries Brunius immensely. Like, every time somebody's coming over now, it's, I need to find out our, our losses. Who died? Yeah. And, um... I'm gonna... Ooh, what should I do? <laughs> I think I think what's gonna happen here is you're gonna be ordered on bed rest, right? Technically, you you risk aggravation till you're at half your hit points, and I yeah. imagine neither of you are anywhere near half your hit points, right? Um, nope. not yet. I'm close. So keep in mind you're gonna get another healing rate every week on Sunday. <laughs> Right, so, so it's going to depend on yeah, it's going to depend on how well I roll, because I'm only uh, six points away from being at over half. So, gotcha. Um, so you're both, you know, you'd risk aggravation to go do anything, but I think what what the reality is is you're not going to be able to get any more information from this bed. So. I think what I need from Brunus and Varys is confirmation. Do you do you do the cautious thing um, and stay put and heal up and rest, or do you risk aggravation to go out and um, get answers? So, I would love to say that I stay in bed and rest, especially with the melancholy, but. I don't know. In fact, with all that, he does stay in bed because he's pouting. Oh, right. The melancholy. Gotcha. Okay. Right. He's melancholic. Give me right. a D6 pouting. roll. What trait would you say would best kind of indicate what he would do on something like that? Um... What would drive you to get out of bed? I'd say that versus prudent. I mean, yeah, lazing about really isn't what he wants to do. That's for sure. He's energetic, so but yeah, that wouldn't do it. No, I think he's just gonna stay. Nothing really pops out. You, at, you could do energetic versus prudent. Okay, let's try that then see what happens we'll leave it up to uh, the dice that's going to be energetic so technically when you succeed at both I have a house that could be either one. You, you get to choose mm -hmm. yeah and then if you fail at both I get to choose ah okay um, Varys is usually pretty prudent so I'm going to stay with that he's going to stay okay as much as he'd like to know what happened to the people that he was quote unquote leading into the battle. Okay, I'm going to so funny enough, just to give Brunius the detail, you are melancholy for seven days, so it's perfect because we're gonna skip another week. Um, but I'll give you both one more intrigue test to see if you come up with anything over that week. Anything at all. From just lounging. Yeah. Lounging, listening. Right. See if your circumstances change. Varys heard something. I can only find anything out on a nat one. <laughs> Do it! Oh. Almost exact opposite. the complete opposite. <laughs> <laughs> um, fair enough. And I mean, that makes sense with, with what you're melancholic about, I think. You don't. Um, He's pouting. So, Varys, I think what you catch is that King Uther's progress has moved to Malahood. He's currently in um, the this, this Centurion King's court, um, participating in his court. Um, 
And there's rumors that a an organized group, like many lords and nobles have started to come here now to meet with King Uther after this victory. They say that Duke Gorlo is beside him, uh, which was the Duke he was feuding with. Remember when he went down? Uh, he was ready to march on, on the Duke. It seems that they're... Uh, that that kind of um, resolved somehow, peacefully, because they're... Rumor has it they're here together. Um, the other rumor you get is that Prince Matic is, um, has basically launched counter raids into Saxon territory, um, basically pillaging, not raids, raids, right? Like returning the, the plundering and stealing of, of, um, uh, basically Dira and Nohawk, the, the two kingdoms, the north, um, And with that, I'm going to give you guys... Please roll another d20. Let's see how week two of surgery goes. I'm good. Both good? Cool. Yeah. All right. Uh, give me another d3 roll. Two more points. All yep. Right. Is anyone at half? No. No. Close. I am, I am one shy. <laughs> I'm three, shy. I'm I'm kind of determining what you're missing out on <laughs> with these wounds. Right. You know, you yeah. Know. Um. That's fair. Um. Oh. I uh, completely forgot. Those are the rules you get for surgery every week. Hold on. Uh, we're doing this wrong, slightly. All right. <laughs> so. So let's go back a step. We did yeah. two surgeries. Right. Both surgeries should be your healing rate, not a D3. Oh, okay. Well, then, yeah, I'm over half them. Okay. All right. So. We did. Two first aids. Those stay. Those D3s are okay. Then um, we did a surgery. Yeah, that should for be for one week. That should be a healing rate rather than what you rolled. Yeah. Then we spent a week in bed, so full on healing rate, or did we need the surgery to even get that? That one's healing rate as well. So, first week in bed, I was at half. So I did not need another surgery roll. Uh, well, you, yeah, that's that's true technically. Um, regardless, I think with the melancholy, you stayed in bed because <laughs> you weren't like being. It doesn't mean you're not wounded, right? It just means you're able to get up and go. Yeah. So, so let's say we'll, we'll keep with the narrative that you're both healthy. At the at the week two mark, um, like two weeks in a little bit, and um, the news you have, sorry, the news Varys has is about you know Uther Matic, um, and uh, well, and Varys would have really relayed it to uh, Arrhenius anyways, because yeah, gotcha. So that's our that's our current state. Okay. So you guys kind of effectively, what you're realizing basically is you got a choice. Um, you can join, you'd be a little late, but you could join the raiding and the retaliation. Um, basically plundering the Saxons, which I, I don't know how you'd feel about that, but it's an option. Um, Or you could join 
anyone who fought against the Saxons is being welcome to join the King's Progress. Or you could stay here in a Berkham. Um, yeah, that's where we get into some timey stuff, I think, with my character. Why is that? Um, because I think I was already on the raids with, uh, Matic, unless there was a different set that he did in Open Pendragon. Uh, I don't know if you were in or raids. Or was it a different one? Yeah, it was it raids in Rose, Rose Stock, wasn't it, or something? Oh, it might have been. Okay, these are yeah. a different set then. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I never, I never touched these on purpose. So. Oh, okay, okay, good. Yeah. I just know that I had raided with them before, so. Yeah, yeah, you're good. All right, just making sure. Um, I mean, I'm good with uh, going to the gathering or whatever, wherever that's at. So King's Progress is kind of like going on a, a road, a bit of a road show a bit with, um, basic with Uther. Yeah. Oh, uh, okay. I will, uh, I'll do that. Yeah, that's fine. And I will encourage Varys to do that. Yeah, Varys will go. I mean, he wanders any, anyways all the time, so it's nothing new. Okay. I'm not good at it, but I will do what I can to talk up yeah. Varys. Well, I mean, Varys isn't good at that kind of stuff either, so... I mean, he was the leader of the, uh... Yeah. The leader of Malahut's response to the Saxons turning their back on us. Right. <laughs> they gave us an opening, and you... Yeah. Yeah, we took it. Yep. Let me see if I can find the place they're referring to on the map. Okay. Back to my notes. I'm assuming it's up here. Cat Wraith. But it's called Catterick in my scenario. Okay. Um, let me just see. I'm going to check one other map. See if it's any different over on this one. Oh, these don't have labels. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's definitely different. <laughs> yeah. Let's see. Magic missile at the darkness. There we go. Uh, cat, cat wraith. I'm pretty sure this is uh, it. Okay. And, I'm just going to see if I can confirm that. Take your time. Oh, yeah, that's quite a bit farther north. Yeah. That's even farther north than where uh, Varys is from. Mm -hmm. Where are you from again? Ripon. Ripon, yep. Okay, so we're gonna we're gonna pick up like with you guys a bit on the open road, uh, and you're going to be passing Ribbon on your way, right? Oh, you know what? I, I think I do have another map. I have a black and white map that might have this. Okay. I gotta figure out where the hell it is. 
but I'm pretty sure I <laughs> thought I had it on roll 20 at some point. Let me just see. It's literally the in the intro picture. So give me a sec. Um, I could easily throw it on here. Uh, Catrick? Catrick, yeah. All right, so on the same map, that we've got right now. Look over to the right. Okay. It's Can already there. Can you ping? That's where Cataract is. I don't see you ping. Uh, zoom out to 30%. Yeah. I still or don't see it. Zoom out to 10%. That was my ping. Oh, you're looking at yeah, you're looking at the black and white map. Okay. So, oh. Okay. Now that I've got that. Yeah. So here. Cataract is literally just north of Ripon. Yeah. Farther up the road or whatever. Okay. Well, I mean, these maps never perfectly line up. But That's we got right. a general idea. It's North Ripon. Um, and um, this is a little bit of like we've got about an hour and a half or so. So we it, this is kind of a little open ended. This this option that was chosen. Okay. Um, but like some role play between the two of you for now would be good. You're, you were catching up effectively to the progress that got ahead of you a bit. So the king's... Um, uh, king Uther's progress has departed and you've got... You're only like a day behind. It doesn't take too long to travel these lands. Especially right now with uh, the threat of Saxons not being as as uh, problematic. Alright. So have you ever actually had the chance to meet King Uther before? Is that in character? Sorry. Yes. I have encountered him before, yes. Oh, okay. Briefly. Eh. His, uh... He's responsible for freeing me of my wardship. Well, that's good. Yeah, it's certainly changed my fate, that's for sure. I had the pleasure of serving under him for a short campaign. And nice. then, uh... It well. It did. I was able to learn a few bricks. Hmm. while following him. A few things that I've carried forward in my career. Hmm. And then right. I've had the chance to meet him like I've spoken to him. <laughs> I see. Uh, that's quite the honor. It is. And what is your opinions of Uther? King Uther? I am... I. It is not a popular opinion many ho within Malahut hold, but I am in favor of Uther taking the title of High King. Hmm. I am, I, I revere the man for his vision and his skill. And would serve at his beck and call if asked. That certainly is quite different than what you typically hear from those from Mala. It is. A lot of people from Malahut haven't served with them. That's also true. 
Not only I have I served with what? What was that? Oh, I, I don't necessarily feel quite as strongly as you do about that, but uh, I am grateful at least. I would like to think that I make myself a better knight than I do some holy man. It would be quite entertaining to hear you give a sermon. Oh, it would be a disaster. And no one would like that. I mean, I'm sure there's a court jester somewhere that would love to hear it. There. I certainly I would not be amused. Ah. Uh, do you think King Uther has a sense of humor? Maybe you can give a sermon to him to see if he'll laugh. Hmm. Uh, I don't know the man well enough. Fair enough. And certainly some random mercenary knight telling jokes to the king. It's a little odd, don't you think? Yeah. Way above my station. It's only above your station if you choose for it to be above your station. <laughs> That's a way to look at it. It is... All about whether people like you or not. Oh, that's a tough sell. <sighs> I'll be honest with you. I could stand to be less liked. Everybody wants my opinion on something. <laughs> could be worse. Try it sometime. You'll see there is nothing worse. No? I would love to be invisible. I would love to ride up and have everybody look at someone other than me. Just look right through you? Yes. <laughs> but if it's not women throwing themselves at me, hoping that I will make them the next Lady of Ainsley. It's other knights wanting to see the spectacle that is Sir Barunius getting back up after getting knocked down. Ah, it's that much of a spectacle, huh? I kid. I guess I could see your point in that. I can't relate to it, really. It's not usually an issue I have to deal with. Condentant Ultra. Mm. It is... the house motto of Ainsley. Always improving. Well, I can agree with that. I always find myself improving in one way or another. I will not lie and say I've never been knocked down. In fact, I will not lie and say that... I will not lie and I will say every single century knight has knocked me on my ass once. If not more often. But I can also say I've knocked every single Sentry Knight on their ass as well. Progress, then. Ever moving. It sounds like you got it sorted out. And as soon as I figure out this whole invisibility thing, I'll be set. Right? I think you're, at, you're speaking to the wrong one for that. Uh, find yourself some whatever you call them. I 
All right, we're gonna give you both hunting rolls plus ten, uh, as the road the ro plus... yeah the road gets a little more trailish up this far north. All right, hunting plus ten. I mean, I can't fail. Yeah. Let's see if I crit. Nope. All right. You manage to follow until the river comes to an end, and you find your yourself moving through a mountain, or moving near to the mountains, close to the pass, going ever, ever up um, in elevation until you reach uh, what is known as... Uh, what's it called? It's got a cool name, otherwise I wouldn't mention it. Uh, the Fort at the Waterfall. Oh. Interesting. You see a great many banners, some of them definitely local, some of them foreign. Um, and I will give you heraldry rolls. All right. Any uh, bonuses? Um, you're both from Melahut, so I'll give you a plus five each. All right. Ooh, There's crit. crit. Okay, that makes sense. Um, let me just get this here. Um, you see, uh, northern. So, so I think for Brunius, you see northern flags. Specifically, what what catches your eye? is um the mountain lords of ragged which is kind of this area up here like basically where you pass through are present um and there's two of them that often sort of <laughs> conflict so so them being here together is kind of a surprise or not a surprise but it shows uther's influence yeah um I think on top of that, with the 16s, uh, you're able to recognize, Varys, that the, the critical, the Duke of Cambinet is here, uh, which is effectively um, a, uh, he is a vassal to King Urien's uh, from beyond the wall, from a place known as, I want to say, Gore. I'll confirm that. Pretty sure it's the land of What's the spelling on those names? Uh, I'll help you. Urians isn't here, but I'll throw that out for you. King of Power. Okay. And Cambinet is this. Oh, I almost had that spelling right. <laughs> All right. You know, it's an absent king. Like, the northern kings aren't here, so there's no sign of King Lot or anyone else right now. Huh. But are Uther's flags flying? Oh, yeah. Okay. The flags of the flags of Logris are prominent. You see those of Gorlo, of Uther, of um, not of not of Roderick, but Ulfius for sure. I'll be right back. Yep. Okay. Let me just pause and give him a minute. Is there or is there anything in particular you wanted to know or look out for? Um. Not really. Like, Barunius really doesn't know a lot of people. He's been, like, more of a commander and, you know, a combat knight for most of his career. Um, except whenever he's been sent away, whether it was to Lothrian to speak to Lot down south to speak to Uther. It's 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 becoming a bit of a joke. 
between the Sentry Knights. He doesn't know what the heck he's doing, but he's always sent. Got it. And without fail, he always succeeds. But then you talk to him about it, and it's like, I don't know what the heck I did. I'm back, sorry about that. It's all good. Alright, so as you come in, you see the flags flying of the Century King, the, you know, Uther, and then his lords, many of the lords of Logris are here. Um, what do you want to do on your approach? Anything in particular? Like, there's going to be no issue with you joining the, the progress. Um... I guess I'm just looking for, I guess, the greatest concentration of uh, the Century Knights. That way I at least have familiar faces. Okay. Varys is sort of just going with uh, the flow of other knights and stuff that are around. He's, he doesn't really have any particular thing. Um... He's not really been in Malahut enough to have any like real major connections up there, so he's just kind of floating around, not drawing any attention when possible. Makes sense. Um, so as far as the Century Knights, um. You'd find that almost all Bernie's the, the named faces that we've displayed have all effectively survived. Your brother, okay. Esquire, uh, Esphorus, um, your uh, your friends. There would be others, though, like people you knew well, knights you knew well, that did die there. And as far as overall numbers, we'll just do this. 11 century knights. Passed. Once and I hear, like, the numbers that passed and the names of those that passed, I... It kind of hits me hard. Because these men were comrades. You know, they've, they've all knocked me on my ass once, and I've knocked them on their ass, and we've become stronger because of it. And... And while we won, those 11 lost their lives with me being... The one they put their faith in. Makes sense. Um, you know, there, there are many other knights who died there. Um, and the Century Knights is used interchangeably. There are actually more than a hundred, but the, usually the, the hundred that Harut calls Century Knights are those he keeps the closest. And then, yes. but he makes a point of always having a hundred around him whenever he's in a public event, right? That's, that's why that, to keep with the, the title and name, he ensures that exactly anywhere he goes, or even in his own court, there are a hundred loyal knights to him. And in effect, it's, it's like a precursor to a round table night. Um, though without a lot of the meaning and, and morals that come with, um, m meaning and virtues, I guess, that come with, uh, the, the chivalrous round table knights. Um, with that, with that said, um, you, as you reach there, you see that 
Uther is standing before everyone. And I need to know from both of you where your loyalties lie. Because both of you have spent more time in Logris. Um, but some of you have like loyalties to Melhut. When those two are challenged against one another, at this point in time, near 490, where is your loyalty? Um, as of the last session that we had for Malahut, um, Ferris still considered himself um, loyal to Malahut. I mean, he's still, even if he doesn't recognize me as like a knight of his or anything, I mean, Ferris mm -hmm. still considers him as lord. So. In 490, Sir Barunius is still fiercely loyal to King Harut, mm -hmm. but still has sort of a heroic image of Uther. He views Uther as a hero and the true High King of the island. High King of England. Of Britain. Varys, do you at this point see Uther as the future High King? Um, not particularly. I mean, he's just a lowly Burt at this point. He's going wherever the pay's at. So. Okay. Perfect. So, at this point, Uther pulls out Excalibur. And I believe at this era, this is the first time either of you have seen it revealed, yes? Definitely. Yes. The sword gleams and glitters despite it being almost like um, overcast. It seems to find and capture every single ray of sun that might exist. Um, you never seen something so crafted so magnificently. It's like there isn't a single tarnished mark on it. And something in you stirs, you know, without question that this is a sign. The one who wields this is a future of this island. That he's connected. You might not be able to put words to it. In fact, you probably can't. But that feeling inside is something that is understood that the, that he is to become High King. And you see the others react with gasp and wonder that makes you kind of feel the same. Um, for Brunius, this is temporary. And by the time we get out of this and back into Open Pendragon, this will be long gone. But for the next while, your homage Uther, which was probably like a two or three before, is now like Zero. a third. Okay, is a ten now. All right. So by the time we get to uh, open pen dragon, it's going to increase a couple no. of times. No. It's going to drop. My homage Uther and open pen dragon is a thirteen. Oh, right, right. Yeah, because you were blindly loyal. That's right. So <laughs> you, you, over was... you overlooked his him. Um, and and I think in this moment, because it seems like there's not a lot to be done here. I think for now, we'll just transition out of this campaign. We're going to make a note of, of what happens leading into the Battle of St. Albans, just so you're aware. Okay. Okay. Um... So year 490 is what we play through there. Um, you learn coming back to uh, Aburicum that King Lot's army was actually encountered plundering in Nohot in Dira. Um, and King Lot was accompanying them. That's why he wasn't there at that meeting. Fair enough. Uh, but they yeah. weren't together. They weren't working together. Just a separate group. Mm-hmm. An opportunist, so to speak. Right. Yeah. I mean, that's what we were. We yeah. weren't necessarily working with. No. 
we took the opportunity to uh, hit them. Barris wanted to watch the Saxons bleed, and that's why he volunteered for that. Because <laughs> Barris doesn't like Saxons at all. Okay. He's vengeful. So, aside from the glory of who ended up, who we individually ended up beating. Did we get any glory for being on the winning side of a battle? Because you were in more of a skirmish than a battle, it's going to be very limited, but I will do that, okay? okay. Yeah. Um, you gain 90. Okay. Yeah. All right. Cool. Um... Intrigue rolls coming out of that year. Hey! It was so obvious, even Barunius found <laughs> out about it. <laughs> Whoever was trying to hide this failed. An intrigue roll for Barris as well. Yeah, get man. Just looking at my list. I failed because that's my record. And <laughs> as so, Brunius, you hear wind um, in the following year that, uh, or or later that winter, rather, that um, the Duke, Duke Gorlo, um, basically begs to leave London. I'm I'm trying to twist this in how you would take it since you're loyal to Uther. Um, and basically disobeys Uther's call and returns back to Cornwall, uh, the Duchy of Cornwall, uh, at Tintagel Castle, with his wife. They, they, they avoid the king's orders. Um, you also learn that the king's loyal friend and uh, war hero... Uh, Sir Bellius dies uh, that winter after suffering a wound in uh, the battle that you supported. The Battle of Lindenpool. Sorry to hear that. I uh, also say a prayer for him at Mass along with a prayer for the eleven of my friends that passed. Sort of thing. Here. Okay, uh, so what, what's up? Uh, one of the things I do do though, uh, Leo, he is ready to be knighted. I put that forward to King Haru, you know. Okay. Um, I think Leo will be knighted as a century knight. Then. Makes sense. That is good to hear. Yeah. The following year, um, Uther um, takes uh, the slight from the Duke of Cornwall personally, and he launches uh, a war into Cornwall. There's two prominent um, events that take place. One at the called the Battle of Terrigal, uh, and one at Tintagel Castle. Um, intrigue rolls. See what you know. I know nothing. Know nothing, John Snow. Um, yeah. Nothing. So, uh, what you hear is that Duke Orlo dies. Prince Matic is nearly gravely wounded. Um, but does end up recovering, obviously. You know that from Open Pendragon. Um, yes. Shortly after, um, elsewhere, 
on the southeast coast in Saucia. Uh, more Saxons arrive and reinforce there. Uh, they basically slaughter um, a merchant town inside their borders and like uh, sacrifice every living Kimrick in that place. God damn. Yeah. Uh, sacrifice them to a woman. Um, yeah. Duke Orlo is buried that year in uh, beside Aurelius, which was his dying wish uh, to be buried next to his king. Which seems like a big... Even in his death, he's slapping Uther in the face a little bit. But it's right. honor, honored nonetheless. Um, Uther calls for a grand funeral for Gorlo. Intrigue tests on that. <laughs> uh, I might get one of these. Yeah. Nope. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> I love how you're just like literally a coin flip and you're failing every single one. It's great. Um the yep. the, the curse of Drax. Oh um, yeah, my intrigues fail so hard in this game. Yeah. <laughs> um And just just to make a note of that, some of these people might come up so we're catching up to speed. King Ellie is the name of or Ele. Um is the um is the name of the king that that's in Sasia. Um but uh yeah we'll gloss over that point. Uh, many of the nobles including uh King Harut do attend the funeral. Um uh King Harut arrives back in record time. No stopping. I mean, he's a busy man. We've got to rebuild our kingdom. I mean, yeah. yeah. We get he. We were there for a funeral. We get. We gave Duke Gorlo all uh, pomp and circumstance. Gave him all consideration, but. We've got work that we have to do. We we don't have the luxury of standing around and, and partying. You oh, know, sure. the hope is that Uther understands that we do have things we have to do. And understood why we had to leave. Yep. Okay. So, uh, continuing on, um, uh, the king stays in Tintagel Castle and in Cornwall for a time, the Duchy of Cornwall, which is, by the way, it's on the map, it's this. Uh, I'm probably not showing the right place. Hmm. Um... Tintagel, Tintagel. All the way down. This is the Duchy of Cornwall, not the Kingdom of Cornwall. They're two different places. So yep. Tintagel over to um, about here. Jagan is kind of the edge of it. Okay. And then it goes into Salisbury over here and Summerland over here. Um, but the, the Duchy of Cornwall... Um, Uther does stay there, and there is a reason. Um, uh, I forgot to mention, too, when you are describing that uh, CX stuff. Is Varus president and all that down there? Oh, yeah, yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. And we'll have to work out where Brunius... It might make sense, Brunius, to figure out where you were for each of these years, too. What you were participating in. Uh, we do for the most work. part, he's got a whole home to rebuild. Yeah, so he'll be mm -hmm. up rebuilding. It makes sense. And uh, a new squire to get. Yeah. Uh, Uther hastily marries Egraine that same year. The, the one where... The Duke is hardly dead six months before Egraine is married. 
Uh huh. I mean, did I get an invitation? Uh, Am I able to go to the wedding? No. I would make time for that. <laughs> no, I don't think you would have. Yeah. Fine. Yeah. Um. So, four ninety-two intrigue rolls. Four ninety-two. Come on, heads or tails, go. Give me something. <laughs> yeah, nah, fumble. <laughs> yes. I love it. Um, Did I get to tick that? <laughs> right? Oh. <laughs> no, I know. Yeah. Um, uh, it was already ticked at this time period anyway. Yeah. So. <laughs> uh, 492. News strikes your ear that uh, Morgoth is married to King Lot that year. So that was... Um, that's uh, Good for that. The, the day... The, the the late Duke Gorlo's eldest daughter, Morgoz, married to King Lot of Lothian. And um Do I get to go to that wedding? Uh I know I know Lot better than I knew Uther. It's true. You're not relation. No. And I'm relatively unknown. <laughs> But you got a pretty face. I do have a very pretty <laughs> face. Um, give me a courtesy roll. Let's see. If you haven't oh. passed. If you haven't passed that. Maybe you got an invite through your your bros. Nope. No. <laughs> uh, King King Nentius ends up married to. The second daughter, Queen Elaine. I've never met that guy. No. Is he cool? Right. Um. I don't know, Mela. He's a foreign, foreign minor king with fealty to Lot. So you might be okay with him. He, there's certainly not a lot of bad news about him or anything. Uh, but then anyone beyond Hadrian's wall is a little more suspicious too. The you know that wall got built for a reason. <laughs> yeah, got, got built by your ancestors. So, or as far as his ancestors more so. But you know what I mean. <laughs> um, King Urians is promised the hand of uh, the youngest daughter of Duke Orlo, Morgan. She's young, so. That's a far future. I don't know. Um, he seems a bit old. Perhaps, you know, it should be his son. Right. I have Probably an opinion. Probably should be, but yeah. It's fair. I, I have... Barunius has an opinion. Yeah, that's fair. He has plenty of them. But, you know, <laughs> I am but a humble knight. <laughs> Indeed. And he looks older than he is. He's actually in his early twenties, but it's still bad. Oh man, that's a that's a rough life, bro. Yeah, it is a rough life. Um, King Uther and Lady Green welcome their first son. Ooh! They name him Arthur. All right. This leaves the near-death uh, Prince Matic in a weird spot as the bastard, the recognized bastard son of King Uther. Um, uh, just helping anything else. I think everything else would be like something... Oh, uh, yeah, that, that would be another one you would absolutely not fail to know. It was just impossible for you not to know. Um, uh, the not long after his birth, I think a couple weeks, um, Arthur is taken. That. Oh, taken. Uh, took him. 
Like, did he die? A great, he a great trial is uh, held, and room and it, what is decreed across Logris is that Merlin, the son of the devil, um, has stolen the future heir. Oh, that monster! Mm -hmm. And there's a great Christian decree against Merlin as a result of this. Many knights uh, go hunting for Merlin and come up short. Uh huh. Unfortunately, at this time, I am currently engaging in. Like, I'm, I'm 32, 33 years old, unwed with a, with a house. I am currently mm -hmm. looking for a wife. Mm-hmm. Like, it is, it is my duty at this point. No, I'm not going to, I'm not going to go there. Um, it's my <laughs> job at this point to go find, <laughs> find a woman to marry me sort of thing. Okay. I will take for the next year intrigue rolls and folklore rolls from each of you. Alright. This should be fun. Intrigue. Fail. <laughs> folklore. Fail. <laughs> Varys. <laughs> <laughs> So clearly, I need to get my intrigue to seventeen because it's all I roll for intrigue. <laughs> you'd, probably, you'd, you'd probably roll straight eighteens then, um, right? Yeah. Get um, it to twenty. It'll somehow roll a twenty-one. Yeah. Right. <laughs> you'll pick up some curse that gives you a minus one. You'll keep rolling twenties. <laughs> yeah. Um. Okay. So even without that, there's certain things you would just know. Uh, for so four ninety three, um, Barunius. I'll give this to you since you you seem to be a bit more aware of King Lot. Uh, King Lot and Morgoth celebrate the birth of their first son, whom they name Gwyn. Huh. That's a good strong name. I should send them a send the send the happy couple a present. Uh, and this might be something that Varys knows more about just through open pen dragon talk, but um, the royal court is rocked by a scandal. The details are quite scandalous, and so the news of what was accused of the king and not is pretty quiet on everyone's tongue. In other words, your failures, you're not able to dig into it. Right. Uh, this will be an interesting one for Barunius, who met Sir Argon. Uh, but Sir Argon ends up in a duel with uh, King Uther. Um, his sword is broken by Excalibur. He's aided... Rightfully so. He's aided by the sword of Sir Galhut, who offers his sword to Argon. No one else had dared do it, but Galhut is an old friend of Argon, so he does so. Um, Sir Argon actually beats Uther in the exchange and maims him. Uther's leg is cut deep and he doesn't quite walk right and he falls ill. Yeah, Varys knows some of this stuff from open, but uh, not none of the specifics. Not really. Barunius didn't even hear it was Argon. In that duel, he just heard a knight trusted by Uther betrayed him. Yeah, okay. yeah. yeah. which yeah, is exactly. why he was so ready to turn and assist Sir Argon. Uh huh. Yeah, that's why it was. It certainly wasn't me buying time. No, no, not at all. And where, where is Brunius at this point in four ninety three? Uh, 493, he is training his new squire. 
Um, still hasn't found a wife. Mostly because he's too... I don't want to say stupid. But he just doesn't see it. Despite the fact that all the eligible ladies are literally throwing themselves at him. It's just... He's supposed to be looking, and it's just he doesn't see any of them <laughs> for some reason. He is really bad at this. Okay. And Varys would have been uh, doing a couple of different things in spring and summer. Uh, summer he was in, I think it was Heartland or whatever, with uh, Lady Everod's feast. Yeah, um, and uh, actually, uh, in late spring of 493, Varys managed to get a glimpse of the questing beast. I mean, they were looking for Pelennor. Right. Nice. Yeah, that was a uh, fun little bit of adventure. Is that the Quick same question. one where what's his name stole Pelinar's horse? Or Pelinar stole his horse and then he took Pelinar? Yes. Yes. It was great. Uh, quick question. How long does it usually take to build like a manor house and, and everything like that? A year or two would probably be enough to rebuild right. from, from burned ruins. Then this year is... Today. Yeah, this year is probably the year that uh, Barunius moves his family back into Ainsley after it's been rebuilt. And was he there? Where was? Where were they? They were displaced in, in Melahut before that. They were in uh, Eberkum. In, in that's what I meant to say. Um, I need a recognize roll plus five. All right. I succeed. Okay. Um, that year, as you're kind of coming back and forth from Aburicum, another a number of foreign kings uh, come to visit. Lot amongst them, Urians amongst them. Um, you recognize some of these kings more by by reputation you don't actually get to meet these kings but they're there um uther sends his count at the time count roderick uh north with a number of knights um you uh did he send those uh other two knights as well though those guys calling themselves the sword of victory yeah they're present at that time all right. At some point, I need to get in touch with them and apologize. I was rather harsh towards them last time they were here, and that was my mistake. Maybe, but they leave rather abruptly um, after only a night of arriving. What the heck? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, on top of that, though, you recognize one of the foreign kings... As the man that downed you in battle. The Saxon prince. I Son would... I would definitely have informed Harut about this. Perfect. Uh, Harut seems rather alarmed. Give me an intrigue roll. Perfect. Fumble. He seems I, I, very alarmed, and he has a very special mission for you um, that involves <laughs> you in, in Logris. Fair enough. Mm -hmm. What my lord requests, I shall succeed at. Uh, let me see what he sends you on here. Uh, this is still 93, right? All right. Uh, 
Obviously, he sent me to go find a wife as well. I get it. That's on me. My fault. Yeah, I yeah. shall work harder at that. Yeah, I think he sends you... Um... I think he sends you to Lindenpool. Fair. And I, if you will it, if you wish it, I'll give you a shot with, um, because you had rapport with her, I'll give you a shot at, uh, um, Flirting and then romance with her if you wanted to try and pursue that angle. I forget her name. Uh, Duke Cornace is... Um, I have it written down. The guy that with the head. Yeah, Lady Gwen? I believe that was it. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. If, you, if you wanted to, you could try that route. Um, I'll even give you a plus five to these rules, but you have to succeed at both. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is going to be funny. Yeah. All right. Oh, shit. Holy crit. Oh, dear. Uh, I think your plus five will turn into a plus ten then. All right. Uh, then this might actually happen. <laughs> nope. No. Still not married. <laughs> uh, <laughs> make make a make a chase roll. Uh oh. This is a lot easier. Yeah. Okay. Oh okay. Yeah. Like uh, I'm just too stupid to realize it. <laughs> Not stupid. It's not stupid. I just don't get it. Did did he develop the feels for her or no? He does like her. Okay. Like he did develop feelings for her, which is why he voluntarily tried to romance her bef the last time he saw her. But he failed spectacularly. Makes sense. This time he tried to flirt with her and succeeded. You know. Right. It's just the timing's not right. Yeah. It's kind of weird that my lord sent me down here. Talk to her. It didn't feel right. Yeah. Um, but make... he... Go uh, ahead. Do in uh, roll 3d6, please. You you have an Amor uh, Lady Gwen of eight as a passion now. All right. Go Brunius. Yay. Okay. Uh, and then I need an energetic roll, a battle test, and a sword or sword or spear. Your choice. All right, energetic. Eight. I succeed. A battle test. Succeed. And your expertise. Oh, wow. Uh oh. I got beat. Okay, make a con roll. Somebody beat me. Ooh. Uh, roll 4d6, please. Uh-oh. Something happened. What happened? You got ambush. Oh, yeah. I... Oh, did your sheet mess up? Or does that weird gray out thing? No, my, uh... My well, computer did something. Over. Okay, you take after, um... In the late winter, so you, you end up there in 483, like, for the fall and the winter. 
Um, yeah. So as it turns early 484 in early, not even spring, in late, late winter, um, Linden Pool is, is under attack. Linden is under attack by Octa and Eos's full forces. There's oh, no sign of Melaha anywhere or the defenses. Um, you're cut off entirely. Uh, you leap the defenses with others. You end up suffering a minor wound, a 13, right? Not a major wound. Um, yeah. And I think you're able to escape with Lady Wen, if you wish it. Is Would that have been your primary goal, to get her out of there? Yes. Um, um, because Linden... To rescue her... Linden Pool falls. Um, basically, I'm trying to get her and as much of her family out as possible. Okay. Because I, do... I know what it's like to lose family, and that's my that's my goal. You see that Duke, Duke Corneas is exited out, but that's the last time you see him. He's got, like, picture, like, you know, you're in one unit leading her away, and you see Corneas in there with some of his loyal men, and then, um... You're separated by the battle. You're wounded. You have but little choice to, to continue going the direction you're going, you know? Yeah. Uh, um, you learn that Linden Pool falls uh, that year. You recover, obviously, uh, from the wounds. Um And uh, that brings us into the Battle of St. Albans for 495. Where did you want to winter? Where did we determine you wintered? In London, right? Uh, I, I wintered in London. Um, that makes sense. Essentially, it's the safe place you would have brought when, right? Yeah. I was, I was cut off from heading back to Aberkham, so we headed south to London. Um, through continued correspondence with Varys, I learned he was going to be in town, so I figured I might as well go. Yep. Say hi. Makes sense. All right, well, that yeah, ties it together really well for you, Brunius. Oh, yeah. yeah. I'll tie it in, ready to go. Five years of... Trying to get a wife. <laughs> Five, five years of trying to get a wife and stagnation. Uh, you can have 29 more glory for the Linden Pool stuff. And then for rescuing Lady Gwen, you can gain another d20. Barris got nothing in 494. It was a slow year for him. Just couldn't find the work, I guess. There wasn't much in the way of war outside of what happened yeah. in Linden Pool, and it came. Again, people are used to warring in the spring and summer, so the fact that they showed right. up early kind of caught everyone off guard. They kind of right. do the same thing in, in Albans. That was like a, a really early move again, right? Mm -hmm. So they, they seem to be catching people off guard. Um, right. I'll give you another um, romance roll, and I, I encourage you, you won't have the modifiers, but I'd encourage you to test uh, a more Lady Gwen since you spend the winter around her-ish. I will make the attempt. And I fail. Okay, nothing, no penalty for that. And I fail. Okay, <laughs> makes I mean, it makes sense, right? Like, it's like things are just chaotic, and uh, yeah. you're cut off from home, and looking after her means something to you, but not necessarily... Um, um, hasn't blossomed any further than what yeah. it is. Yeah. Like, I try, I don't know how to... I don't know how to. Yeah. Cool. I guess that's going to be the best way to put it. Yeah. I try, but I have no clue what I'm you doing. You have no clue what you're doing. <laughs> it's fair. So... All right, gang. Sounds fun. Well, I think we have wrapped uh, a bit of this story now. Yeah. Yep. And uh, 
I'll be seeing you both, obviously, in Open Pendragon. Uh, yes, continue. you will. There will be probably some opportunities for you guys to cameo during Anarchy, so I'll keep you posted on that. Alright. No problem. Um, uh, do we have a heads up on when the next Open Pendragon is? Yeah, so what I'll do is t uh, tomorrow I'll put out the poll for June to see what people's availability is. Okay. And then and then from there, what I try to do is I try to match a couple. Usually what, what we've been fairly successful at is giving people one session a month. It's kind of the right. best we can do okay. with only two DMs. Yeah. Liam only runs one. I, I run, I committed to one to three. Um with with Malaha off for a while I might be able to to do an extra open pen dragon on Wednesday but it'd probably literally be this spot like this time's at time frame that I right oh okay. good um but yeah that I I'd love to do more um but you know it is drop in so it's just best effort we do what we can with a single episode <laughs> so. yep also you've got to look out for now you have uh responsibilities for project aurora i do since you're now like a professional gm there i am indeed um mm -hmm. still waiting for some of that to come to an end there but yes it, it's definitely factored in so i'm going to be taking this summer kind of in that, that new saxon um project as like a side project to figure out where everything is landing because that's really more what it is is too many things are up in the air it's not too much to do it's just too much is up in the air so yeah i need to have some of those things commit um project aurora will be like scheduled sessions uh three or four times a month it's not very hard for me to do so yep um but yeah thanks for playing guys it was great uh great having you and uh we'll see you in open pendragon uh, no problem. Thanks for running.